Today's episode of the Believe in Steelers podcast is brought to you by betonline.ag. Major League Baseball is in full swing and the Summer Olympics continue to chug on. If you want to place a bet on the action, Bet Online is the place to do it. And I, I'm burying the lead here. Preseason starting this week and not just NFL football, Steelers football. If you want to place a bet, even on preseason action, again, Bet Online is the place to do it. I don't care what your thoughts is. I don't care what sport it is. Just go to Bet Online because they always act 24 7, seven days a week, nonstop, no sleep. <laughs> No sleep, Mike. No sleep. Visit the website today <laughs> or use your mobile device to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. So before the next big game ahead, that's Thursday. Again, Cowboys, Steelers, head over to Bet Online and start playing today. All right, cue the music. It's time to start the show. Welcome to another edition of the Believe in Steelers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mark Bergen, joined as always by my guy, two-time Super Bowl champion and 12-year veteran of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Ike Taylor. IT, it is game week between now and the Super Bowl in February. We will have football every single weekend. It starts Thursday night. Steelers, Cowboys, I'm ready to roll Finally starting to talk about on-field action in 2021. I'm fired up, and I'm fired up to talk with you this morning. How are you doing, my man? Hey, Mark and Mark, the football season is here. Tomorrow, the Dallas Cowboys are going to play my very own Pittsburgh Steelers for the Hall of Fame game. I'll be up there on Friday, but yeah, it's football season now, baby. Ain't no turning back. We're going to get into it, and we start with Mason Rudolph named the Steelers starter for the preseason game. Big Ben won't play. A few other veteran players won't play. Cameron Hayward, Joe Hayden. I'm excited to see the three Steelers play at quarterback, though. You've got Rudolph, who's going to start the game. I want to see what Dwayne Haskins can do, the former first-round pick out of Ohio State. And we're going to get to see Josh Dobbs and what he can do at some point in the second half of this game. Were you surprised at all, though, Ike, with Rudolph being named the starter over Haskins? What, what's your two, what's your take on that? Nah, not at all. Rudolph has been there the longest. Um, if you just look at what happened last year going into Cleveland, there was a couple of plays short of winning that game in Cleveland. We all knew last year Cleveland had to win that game to get in the playoffs. I think Mason Rudolph in the hostile environment, he played pretty damn well, you know, so – um, I thought he was on his way. If Big Ben didn't come back this year, they was gonna go and on and give Mason Rudolph the nine, my personal opinion. So this is this is this is accurate. This is right. He's supposed to be uh backing up Ben at this point in time. He's been in that system for a while. He understands the organization. He knows exactly what Coach T and the offense is looking for. You know, he's have he's had he's had had a rapport with the receivers and everything. So this ain't nothing new for me, but what I do like is, you know, Dwayne Haskins, he always trying to make it a competition as he should. And that's what he said in the report uh, yesterday. Like he wants to compete and he wants to get in that second string spot. So that's just going to make iron sharpening iron between Mason Rudolph and Dwayne Haskins. But, yeah, uh, I think they did it right uh, with Mason Rudolph going right behind Ben at that second spot. I'm excited to talk with you next week, Ike, when we can overanalyze this game, a preseason game. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, you laugh at that because I've seen reports on Twitter about the Steelers backup quarterback competition and how Haskins is throwing the ball downfield better than Mason Rudolph in the limited time that media members have access to be able to even watch practices. I don't give a hoot what happens in practice. It's the old Allen Iverson line, Ike. We're talking about practice but we can finally get some on-field action. And speaking of the overanalyzing, Najee Harris, or excuse me, Najee Harris, the running back. I can't wait to overanalyze however many carries he gets, but we are going to get a four-game sample size of him in the preseason. So excited to see what he can do in the backfield for the Steelers. Yeah, I can't wait. 
for Najee. Um, the more I just hear about what this dude has been through since his childhood, the more the more I see the stories on what he held his draft party at, the more of the drive to 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 support his his fellow teammates at Alabama for for pro days and combines. Man, it's just this dude just overall a good dude. He just so happened to uh, be Derrick Henry's little brother, so say so. Um, you get a good dude, you get a good dude who always hung. You get a young man who always asking questions. Uh, I saw a report he was talking about. Uh, he was talking to the media. He was like, um, of course, when you line up outside. And he was like, no. And when, in the report, I asked him why. He was like, because I asked my offensive coordinator and I asked Ben. And they said, and they said I'm live. Like, anytime you're out there, don't think of yourself as being a decoy. You're really live. Then when you look at the one-on-ones, read the reports and the, the seven-on-seven drills and look at some of the Instagram and the social media and you see this guy catching one-handed balls, you know what I'm saying? Like, this dude is really is special. So I think – and I'm going to tell you this again. I didn't I didn't think it was a good pick at first, um, getting the running back that early. But the more I look, the more I hear, the more I see, the more they talk about this kid, Najee. I'm like, man, hey, that's that's the right dude. You know, he's a he's a Pittsburgh Steelers. It's a, it's the difference between drafting, you know, a football player and the Pittsburgh Steelers. This guy, Najee, man, he's a Pittsburgh Steeler for sure. I want to warn Steelers fans in advance. It is okay if we are underwhelmed or maybe whelmed with Najee Harris in the preseason, and here's the reason why. Honestly, save him for the regular season. Like, I've seen flashes of what he can do, but to me, it's not worth the possibility of him getting hurt. It's why I like to see that the Steelers are resting Big Ben, that they are resting Cam Hayward and Joe Hayden in the first preseason game because, remember, too, Steelers have four preseason games. The rest of the league, other than the Cowboys, only have three because of with the 17-game regular season. So I would rather keep those guys fresh, the key players that you're going to need dur during the regular season. And I go back to, and I've said this for a few weeks now, what our guy Damashek says about the preseason. It's for younger players. It's for rookies. It's for you know guys that need to prove themselves but it's almost like a war reenactment where if you squint your eyes, it looks real. But, you know, how much bearing does that really have on the regular season? So, like, if you're whelmed, and I'm not going to say overwhelmed or underwhelmed, but if you're just whelmed with Najee Harris in the preseason, that is okay. We will evaluate it week one of the regular season because, again, I go back to I really just want the Steelers to get through preseason healthy. You still got to let Najee play. And the reason why you got to let Najee play is you want to get him in the rhythm with this offensive line. I don't think yeah. all the offensive linemen um, will be starting. And they still shuffling that offensive line too, Mark. You know what I'm saying? So they still trying to see who could possibly be the starter before the beginning of the season. So for Najee, man, you still want him to get some of that ump in him. You still want him to get hit a few times. You still want at least him or somebody from Dallas to walk you to the NFL. So – and I think it's going to go to Najee Harris' way. But, yeah, I, I would love for him to play. Uh, he's going to be on the pitch count. He's not going to play that much. Uh, coaches probably get two or three series out of Najee just to get his feet wet in the water and, and walk with him to the NFL. But at the same time, I, I would love to see him just getting the rhythm, not only for himself, but the offensive line as well, picking up protections for Mason Rudolph and, and, and Dwayne Haskins. It's a lot of other things other than ru running that coaches are looking for from a running back. And, and one of them is pass protection. So they, they want to see a few things. They, they already know he's been a good runner. They want to see him pass protect and pick up blitzes if they do blitz um, from the Dallas Cowboys. And at the same time, line him up wide to see if he can do what he did in college, coming out of that backfield and catching the ball and making plays. So I think this is two or three game series for him. I think we're on the same page, Ike. I'm just saying it's that fine line to where I don't need to see him. I, I don't need to see him really for maybe a quarter, like maybe a quarter. And again, for me, get to the regular season at full strength at, from a team standpoint. And that's just one thing where, again, if you're not quite getting where it's like, I, and if he struggles at all, there's going to be doubters out there say, oh, he wasn't worth the first round pick. 
to me, we can begin think, to really we can begin to really evaluate that once we get to the regular season. Yeah, I don't I don't think Najee is going to struggle not one bit. Just just from his humbling background okay. and what he's been through and what he's done at Alabama, there there won't be a struggle at all. He he looks like the type that don't force the issue. You know, he he acknowledging he's been waiting on this moment. You know what I'm saying? So it it ain't no pressing the issue um, from what I see from Najee Harris at all. Before we get to Big Ben, I I know you're going to be looking at the cornerback play too because Joe Hayden's going to sit. So Cam Sutton, who you know, who else is going to be the guy? I know that's going to be something that you have your eye on on Thursday night. Yeah, for me, for me, I I want to see uh I want to see the front seven to be honest with you. I think okay. the second the secondary is only good as they front seven. You know, um, I think this secondary has been playing for a while. I think finally Coach T has a secondary that he likes and, and being opportunists and, and getting picks and giving the offense as, as many turnovers as they can new, and new possessions. So for me, man, I, I I I deal with the secondary, but, you know, I don't think Mink is going to play. Um, Terrell, I don't think – I don't know if Terrell is going to play as well. So um, for, for when it comes down to the starters, I would love – for me, it's the regular season with the with – the, with the, um, with the starters, but the young guys, man, it's just right now you're fighting for that fourth or fifth spot. You know what I'm saying? You're fighting to get in the rotation. Um, I think the first four spots are already, you know, intact. Um, they're gonna move Cam in the inside when it comes down to the nickel. So that 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 fourth or fifth man, uh, if Dallas was to be played for Pittsburgh, you know, in a regular season, that's 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 their fourth or fifth spot. That nickel, that dime guy, you know, so. Time to tell, man. But for me, man, it, I, to be honest with you, I'm really just excited. Football is back, you know, and it's on the Thursday and Pittsburgh is playing Dallas and I get to see my homeboy, TP, which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes in that Hall of Fame. Ike, before we get there, I want to thank you for lending me your psychic abilities through osmosis. Don't know if you saw Art Rudy the Second's comments about the potential for a Big Ben return in 2022, and I said that is a possibility on the table if the Steelers can't find an, a, a tangible upgrade at the quarterback position, and it's kind of a wait-and-see approach to see how Big Ben plays in 2021. He'll play on that $14 million deal this season, took a $5 million pay cut as well. 39 years old, entering is it year 18? I'd have to double check that. I believe it's year 18, but I, I saw it. I appreciate you lending me your psychic abilities because I said that this, it's like, you know, I'm not predicting it, but I'm saying, are we really sure 2021's Big Ben's last season? And you heard it from Mark Rooney the second this week. Yeah, you did. But you also heard it from Coach Tomlin. Coach Tomlin said last week he's fine with, ben, with Big Ben taking a year to year contract. You know what I'm saying? So, if he said that last week, obviously him and Mr. Art must have talked, so they got something in common. So the fact that Mr. Art just came out publicly and said it, I guess, you know, I'm just guessing, and this is just is my personal opinion, that Coach T and, and, and Mr. Art had talked about this last week. We're fine with seven doing a year-to-year -year contract if we don't find our successor, and I think their successor is Dwayne Haskins. Okay. Oh, you know what? And we're going to see, Ike, I know you're really high on Haskins. I'm can high. throw the ball through a car wash without getting wet. I, I, I know you're high on him. <laughs> yes. Yes, I am, Mark. All right. Like you said last week, you told me this, Ike. You said, uh, it sounds like you're slurping the Kool-Aid. I'm just going to sip it. I'm just going to sip it with Haskins. <laughs> I want to see more. For sure. For sure. I'll take it. I got to watch what I say to you because you show sure throw it back at me. Well, that's that's my responsibility, Ike. <laughs> Ike, you're going to be going to go to, to Canton to see Troy Polamalu and many of your Steelers teammates, organization members get inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, it's my understanding that you're going to be traveling on Friday? Yes, Friday morning. Okay, so where are you going to watch the Steelers game on Thursday then? I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it at the house. To okay. be honest with you, I'm just gonna chill. Uh, due to COVID, you know, TP had to wait till Friday, so Troy Palomalo he had to wait till Friday, so I ain't moving unless Troy moving. That's that's just how it is. If Troy was there on Monday, I was there on Monday as well. But since he only gonna be there on Friday, we're well, coming in on Friday. I'll be there Friday. 
as well. So just excited. Um, I'm sure you saw the Face First or some of the clips with the Face First podcast with me, him, and Ryan Clark just chopping it up. So um, I just can't wait, man. Hopefully I don't shed a tear or nothing because on the podcast, Troy and Ryan Clark shed a tear. But you know me, I was tough as nails. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So <laughs> that's just how that was. But, man, I can't wait to see TP uh, hear Coach LeBeau intro him and his speech. And uh, he made it, so we made it. That's 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 how I feel when it comes down to TP. Which Steelers teammate is, like, the odds-on favorite to start crying first? Um, it, it just it just depends on if Troy start crying. If TP start crying, everybody gonna get to cry. If you don't cry, ain't nobody crying. Okay, okay. And then I know, did you go to Coach LeBeau's Hall of Fame induction in 2010? You've been to Canton before. Yeah, this is this is be my second time going to Canton. You know, Coach LeBeau, I'm in the I'm in the Hall of Fame forever. Um, and I tell you this, Mark, Coach LeBeau uh, said, "Oh, Ike Taylor." name in his speech. Now, he could have named all the Hall of Famers and potential Hall of Famers who he coached. But he, he he said, oh, he named one player. And his first name was Ike and his last name was Taylor. So the fact that that man mentioned my name in his Hall of Fame speech um, meant a lot to me on how he felt towards me. So, yeah, I probably don't get the recognition uh, I deserve. And I don't mean it to my own home, but my my teammates love me, and really, that's all what matters. And everybody understand, like, I treat people well, and I'm gonna do exactly what you asked me to do, and stay humble and grind mode. So, the fact that Dicky Coach LeBeau said my name in this Hall of Fame speech, no other, no other player but the good old Ike Taylor, that meant a lot to me. I love that. I love that. I'd imagine that you'll get some shout outs this this upcoming weekend too, Ike, and. With Dick LeBeau, I know that when you were still at the network, I know there's the it's like a minute, minute and a half clip about your admiration for Dick LeBeau. And I've watched the clip and it's just like, I just wish I could have access to more B-roll footage of some of the one-liners he would give some of the players while he was coaching. It's unbelievable. Yeah, dude was special. Dude, just like Troy. You know, like I said, don't, don't, Troy and Coach LeBeau, they come around every 40. Every 40 years, you know, um, good ones come around every 20. But when you want to talk about just great human beings, let alone all-stars, let alone Hall of Fame guys in general, men and who can lead, um, especially with, without talking loud, don't have to yell. They just do it by example, you know, and you just got to tune in and listen to them. That's Troy Palomalo and Dick LeBeau. So Troy couldn't couldn't have picked a better person for his intro than, than, than Dick LeBeau. And I just can't wait. I'm going to see the, the band will be back. Uh, a lot of the 05, 09 Super Bowl winning teams, we all going to be there. So it's all going to be a good time for the celebration. Is there someone you're most excited to see? I know you just saw RC and Troy when you mm -hmm. were in San Diego the other weekend. Is there a teammate you haven't seen in a long time that you're most excited to see when you go to Canton? No, nah, it's, it's everybody, Mark. Like, it's, it's just... Once you, once we all see each other, it's it's all love. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. it's it really really that's when the tears may fall in the hugging from from the time we greet each other. You know, it's like, damn, bro, I miss you. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's a genuine it's a genuine love. The brotherhood we had in that Pittsburgh still a locker room. So honestly, I can't wait, but it's a over under when somebody would probably cry. I don't think it would be for the hall of fame uh, mm -hmm. speech. I think it would be more of the, the greet when the first time we didn't seen each other in a while kind of thing. I put you on the hot seat right there, Ike. And it's almost like when you ask a parent, who their favorite child is. So I tried to get an answer out of you and you gave me the, uh, too, the diplomatic too that, answer. Baby. Yeah, baby. I'm head yeah. of the game, baby. Head yeah. of the game. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> keep playing chess. I'll play checkers. Ike. 
I'm really excited to talk with you next week about how everything goes in Canton. Safe travels to you Appreciate on you. Friday as well, getting there as well. Really excited to talk with you next week to ask you about how everything goes. Our final segment of the show, Carson Wentz and Quinton Nelson out for the Colts with the same foot injury in the AFC South. They'll both miss somewhere between five and 12 weeks. Ike, this is my opinion. I think the Quinton Nelson injury is more significant than the Carson You took the Wentz words out of my mouth. Well, you, you tell me that the mouth. house is built from the ground yeah. up, but Quentin Nelson, one of the best maulers up front that the National Football League has. One of the best offensive linemen in the NFL this date. You know what I'm saying? He just wound up having that injury. And yeah, and if if you want to start a franchise, that's who I'm drafting over Carson Wentz. I'm drafting Quentin Nelson, period. He's he's a he's a he's a football player. To me, he's a stiller. Pittsburgh d- just didn't have the opportunity to get him first. But yeah, you build your team from the ground up. And when it comes down to Monday morning meetings after that Sunday game and coach is showing the offense or a defense alignment, smashing faces and being dominant and setting the tone, that's that guy right there, Quinn Nelson. So and this is no disrespect to Carson Wentz. Um Hopefully both of them heal fast and get back ASAP whenever they can. But uh, yeah, Carson Wentz. He's this. This has been a issue for Carson Wentz, injury prone. You know, for the past six years, that's what's been going on on his resume. So hopefully he can stay healthy. He just can't shake that injury bug. But Quentin Nelson is he's your old school 1970s Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's have a bar fight kind of guy. You know. Yes, uh, you mentioned Wentz playing 16 games in the regular season. Again, we're moving to 17 games this season. Right. But in his, I'm doing live math here, Ike, which is always okay. dangerous. He's only done that twice in his career, though. So he's been That's in the tough. league now for several years. He has struggled to stay healthy. You want to say he's injury prone, whatever. The facts are what they are. We always say the best ability is availability. It's availability, correct. It's not just with Nelson's injury, though. To me, it's how do you continue the success of the running game as Jonathan Taylor enters his second year? Correct. So Nelson's out with an injury. You're also down your Pro Bowl center. That's a guy by the name of Ryan Kelly. He's going to miss a few weeks with an elbow injury. Left tackle Eric Fisher is still rehabilitating back from a torn Achilles injury. And here's why this matters, Ike. It's like, well, why are you talking about the Colts? We know the Texans are going to be one of the worst teams in the NFL, just given what we saw last season. They have a lot of work. First-year head coach in David Culley. In right. Jacksonville, the Jaguars, you've got a rookie quarterback in Trevor Lawrence, also first-time NFL head coach in Urban Meyer. We don't know what to expect with them. So who's left? The Tennessee Titans. It's really a two-team division in my eyes between the Colts and the Titans. And if you look at the betting markets, they would agree with what I'm saying. And so that's where Carson Wentz comes in. You try to rehabilitate his career, reunite him with Frank Wright, where he had success in Philadelphia under Frank Wright. And that's kind of the idea behind all of this. But if you can't stay on the field and stay healthy, I don't know. And, and, and I'll go to this as well. If the Colts don't bring in a, a veteran quarterback to try to band-aid this situation right now, I actually think that's a good thing, meaning maybe Wentz's injury won't take as much time. It won't, it'll take closer to say five weeks than 12 weeks. And he could maybe miss maybe one or two games, but still get back for the start of the season. I'm going to be really curious to see how all of this plays out. Yeah. I think you make a trade for Nick Foles. If Phillip Rivers don't want to come out of retirement, that's what I think the coach should do. Um, I think Phillip Rivers already know the setting. He's been a part of the growing process with with coach he understands how to win uh he knows that locker room the locker room know him as well so yeah even though he's coaching and this could possibly his first year coaching his high school team you know hopefully trying to get them to a state championship why not come back and come out of retirement for a year you know you give you as in philip rivers i think philip rivers give you know the the, the coach the best opportunity to make that playoff push again he did it last year, and you want to talk about a guy who can get rid of the ball? Yeah, he, yeah, he does like the. He's a, he's a gambler, 
He's a Brett Fall. He's a gunslinger. But why not? You know, you got a, a lot of young talent. Your defense is probably top five. Uh, without the injury bug on the offensive line, you probably had a top three offensive line right behind or in front of the Cleveland Browns. You got two studs at the running back position. You got receivers. You got a head coach who knows what the heck he's doing. So, yeah, uh, why not bring them back? So it, it, that's that's how I look at it. If you can't make, make a trade or push for Nick Foles, because Nick Foles right now is at the third string quarterback. You know, but he got a good rapport with the head coach as well. So, Tom would tell, but I would definitely push, if I'm the coach, I would definitely push and try to talk to Phillip Rivers on coming out of retirement. I'm with you on Rivers because I really don't know what to expect from Brett Hundley and Sam Ellinger, the rookie out of Texas. I don't know what to expect from them. They're both young players. I'm, so I'm with you with Rivers. But Foles, and I understand Foles' frustration because he stuck third on the depth chart because you've got Andy Dalton and Justin Fields in, in Chicago. If I'm the Bears, I hang on to all three for the time being because you're one injury away from being next guy up. But I'm going to push back with the Foles return, and I understand, oh, well, the return with Frank Reich, it could work in, in Indianapolis a lot like it did for Nick Foles on his magical run to the Super Bowl. But we've seen this story again, and it's like, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. You know the rest of the line. And, Ike, I'm going to push back here because, to me, if you bring in Nick Foles for this Colt situation, it's like putting a Band-Aid on a flesh wound. He was reunited with John Filippo in Jacksonville, and Gardner Minshew, a six-round rookie, outplays him. He gets reunited with Matt Litt and Matt Nagy, Bill Lazor, and Filippo again in Chicago. And Mitch Trubisky, love him or hate him, outplayed Nick Foles from a quarterback standpoint in the 2020 season. And he's no longer in Chicago either. So with Nick Foles, it's like, how many chances can you get? I just don't see a way that they can rekindle the flame, how they can create that magic again that they did on the Super Bowl run. I don't see it. I understand Nick Foles frustration because he's buried on the bench in Chicago, but I, I just don't see how that could help the Colts at all for the those marriage reasons. that that marriage is the one and it, that's the flame you don't need to re, you don't need to rekindle relationship when it's already popping when every thursday you got a date night with your girl and you haven't missed a thursday in 10 years there's nothing to rekindle everything is proven between <laughs> coach frank wright and nick Foles. when we're together we win maybe when he goes to chicago Chicago and other teams and Nick Foles just ain't Nick Foles. But I know what Coach Frank Wright, Nick Foles is Nick Foles. Nick Foles is a Super Bowl winner with Coach Frank Wright. That's what I do know. And by the way, he took Carson Wentz's place when Carson Wentz did get hurt. So I tried with the coach that you won the Super Bowl with in the same situation, Carson Wentz got hurt. And when he got hurt, Nick Foles stepped in and won him a damn Super Bowl. You might as well see if you could do it the second time. The magic and the flame haven't left, Marky Mark. I, I'm going to push back. Nick Foles, when has he ever played a 16-game season at the quarterback position? Yeah. I don't think he's ever you, done you it. Said it you, said, you, said, you said it right. He's the Band-Aid. He, we, we are waiting for Carson Wentz to come back. So that's just, I'm not asking him to be my franchise quarterback. I'm asking to put the Band-Aid on the cut. And the cut is right now Carson Wentz is out. So Nick Foles – Come rejoin us. Let's see if we can do this magical run again. And if Carson Wentz comes back early, it's Carson Wentz spot to lose again. And see, but Carson Wentz, from the mental standpoint, has to deal with, oh, this is the That's guy who fault. is That's beloved. I, I know, but Ike, we're talking about, like, if you go to Philly, there's the this statue the outside thing, of the stadium. Same thing with like, when, when, when Carson Wentz came back from injury and there's a statue mm -hmm. outside of the stadium there that he has to go to and walk by when he's going to drive that, by when he's not, going into work every single day. Like, fault, and though. he's supposed to be the phrase at the time. He's supposed to be the face of the franchise in Philly. That's not Nick. Yeah. That's not Nick Foles fault. And even know, though he's supposed like, to be the face that, that don't mean that, that, that don't mean nothing. If Phillip Rivers was to come and Phillip Rivers do the same thing, is he going to go back in the, in the tunnel again? Is he going to go back in the shell again? That's just Carson Wentz. Like, I can't help Carson Wentz's is 
hopefully, but the way he's acting sensitive towards adversity in certain situations. Carson Wentz, if you don't want to be sensitive, go on and play. Give me a 16-game season. Make sure your butt stay on the field if you don't want to get sensitive. But if, you're, if you keep getting hurt and you keep giving these guys behind you, like the Jalen Hurts and the Nick Foles opportunities, your butt going to be out the league sooner than later. I really hope Nick Foles goes to Indy just for the sake that this conversation could continue. Right? This has been fantastic. Me too. I'm going to smash you. I'm going to smash you during the season. I hope he do. <laughs> I liked my Band-Aid analogy. I think that takes tops on today's show, Ike. It's hard to get a better analogy than you here on the pod. No, that was perfect. I had to, I had to reuse it. <laughs> If you enjoy the Believe in Steelers podcast, go leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to your shows. Ike, we're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. We are everywhere, everywhere now. And that is a testament to Courtney Vargas, John Brinkus, and their team over at Brinks TV, the Believe Podcast Network. And you, Ike Taylor, number 24 of the Pittsburgh Steelers, number one in the fan of Steelers hearts as well, doing the show week in and week out with you is an absolute pleasure. Oh, 100%, man. Shout out to you, Mark. Uh, appreciate being my my guy for this Believe podcast. Shout out to Believe podcast. Shout out to Brinks TV and Miss Courtney and their team, everything they're doing. Shout out to the viewers and the listeners. Shout out to Bet Online. Whew, y'all been with us since day one. I guarantee you we're going to keep making y'all smile and happy. Uh, thanks for sponsoring us. But at the same time, man, just want to give us – make sure y'all give us five stars. Please give us five stars. Tune in. Uh, like review talk to us we'll try to talk to y'all back but just want to thank everybody for just tuning in to to, to mark and i on a daily you know and we're gonna keep entertaining and try to be insightful as well steelers football returns on thursday night hard knocks to the premiere on hbo on august the 10th to like really excited to talk to you next week safe travels to you as you head to canton to celebrate your teammate troy palomalu for Ike taylor you. I'm Mark Berg, and thank you for listening to the Believe in Steelers podcast. We'll see you next week. Take care, and so long, everybody. Peace.